If you're used to working with mobile devices, then your primary input device is a touchscreen. That's always going to be connected unless your device is having a very bad day. By contrast, TV remote controls and game controllers are usually connected via Bluetooth. Because they're battery powered, controllers often sleep to save power, shutting down the radios after a couple minutes of unuse. In this lesson, we'll learn how to handle connect and disconnect events from input devices. The input manager fires events when devices are connected or disconnected, and it provides a method for us to register an input device listener, which we can use to subscribe to these events. Here they are. You can probably guess what two of these mean. On input device added and on input device removed are triggered when devices are connected or disconnected. On input device changed is a little bit different. Typically, input devices don't change, but they certainly can. For example, you can imagine a game controller might have two different modes. A good strategy for dealing with a change event is to simply disconnect and then reconnect the device. Let's see how our Asteroids game handles this, and we'll start back in the game view. The first thing to notice is that our view implements the input device listener interface, and we'll see where this is defined in a sec. Once we've implemented that interface, all we need to do is override those three methods we discussed. Here's on input device added. What's cool here is that when a controller is connected, our game gets the device ID and then creates a ship for it. We maintain a mapping from ship to input device, and in this way, we can support multiple players easily. When a controller is disconnected, we simply remove the ship corresponding to that device ID. Pretty easy, right? Here we are in the constructor of our game view. The last step is to get a reference to the input manager and then register our view as a listener for it. Rather than directly accessing the system classes, we use the input manager compact provided by the controller sample. This is code that you're free to reuse. It abstracts away differences in how input devices are handled across different versions of Android. Instead of designing your game to work with an input manager from a specific Android version, you can design your game logic against input manager compat. This class contains a factory method, which behind the scenes will instantiate an appropriate concrete implementation depending on which version of Android your game happens to be running on. And you can see that factory method inside Input Manager Compat right down here at the bottom. And by the way, the factory design pattern is one of my favorites, and I highly recommend learning it if you haven't seen it before.